this afternoon. I just love looking at these books with you. I am loving sitting here with you. And what are we looking at? What is this page? This is, these, these are beautiful trees. <gasps> the trees, they're so tall you can't see the tops of them. That's right, this is from Sequoia National Park. Sequoia National Park, isn't that down the road a little? Yes, it's right near Fresno, down the street from Yosemite. No. And I've not seen these. Well, you know, you haven't been everywhere, but a lot of people have, especially this particular photographer. And, and so is there more in this book? Yeah, let's turn the page. Oh, look at this sunset. Oh, the colors. Oh, the, color, the orange. You know, I don't get out very much because my children, God love them, they, I, I'm, I'm in a home. And where I am, there's all these walls and there's buildings and there's, there's trees, but not like those. And, and then there's no sunset. I can never see a sunset. So this is beautiful. So I am sick. loving this. That's so cool that we can actually go somewhere in a book and, you know, see something that we that we're normally we wouldn't be able to go. So it's like going somewhere without leaving home. It's like a vacation. What is this with this? this this what is, is this? This is the Big Sur coastline. I have been camping here. You've been camping there? It's a little wet. It was very wet, that particular camping. <laughs> I, I got rained on. It was so wet. What was? What were you thinking going camping in the rain? Well, it seemed like it was going to be a nice time, but, you know, um, it ended up starting to rain, and my dog got rained on and everything. It was just... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll look at the picture. Let's see. Let's look at a few more here. Don't you just love books? I love books. Although mine, they're not, they're, I don't have so many anymore. You don't? No, you they cleaned my room. They cleaned my room and they took all the books. They thought they were old and useless and so they took them all away from me and so I have to start over again. Well, books are pretty awesome. That's all I have to say. I love books. I have thousands of books. I think everybody should have books, don't you think? Yes, you know, at some point, books weren't even, people didn't even own books. No. No. That's impossible. No, really. Actually, books weren't invented, um, you know, maybe a thousand years ago is when the book was this kind of a book where you could turn the pages. That's when they were invented. How long ago? Well, that's not very long ago, actually. Well, I'm, I'm pretty old and we've always had books. They've been, I thought I've always been around. Well, the actually, books were invented during the time of the Middle Ages when there was, you know, castles and knights in shining armor. And Robin Hood? Robin Hood probably would have lived in this forest here. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. So, but books really, before books, people, you know, they, they wrote on other things. Like what? Well... They wrote on cave walls, hmm? and they wrote on papyrus. The Egyptians wrote on papyrus. What's a papyrus? Oh, it's a plant. And you, but they wrote on plants? Well, they opened the plant up, and they made a nice surface, and then they wrote their hieroglyphics, and then people wrote on animal skins. That I understand. Yes, that one, yeah. That, that was, one I can understand. And they wrote on um, bones. Bones? Yes. They but did. they but they chewed on bones. Well, what were they write on them? They would put scrimshaw on the bones, and they would they wrote they wrote on rocks, and they wrote on sand, and they wrote in the dirt. They wrote in the dirt. Wouldn't that just get stomped away? Yeah, that was the problem. They even wrote on leaves back then. Leaves. Leaves is silly. They blow away. They uh, kind of get crunchy, and then and then they get, they just blow. Well, you know that was the biggest problem is that you know the. What do you do? You want to write down information, but you know, they had to invent paper before they could make a book. I guess you're right. And do you know who made paper? Who? The Chinese? No. Yes. The Chinese? I thought they made spaghetti. No, <laughs> they did make spaghetti, actually, in kites, and, but they invented paper. And without paper, we would never have a book. What would we do without those Chinese? They're so brilliant. They are. They were a brilliant culture, and they still are. Oh. Always making beautiful things, but the book wasn't invented in China. The paper was, but the book was invented in Germany. Germany? What did they do in Germany to make a book? Well, they had a very, very, very famous book. In fact, they still make this book that was made, the very, very first book that ever was made, was, is still made to this day. No, what very first book would, would, would you be talking about? Well, it's a very popular book. You, I, can't, I can't try to take a guess. Hmm. Well, let's see. I know everybody has a phone book. 
The, it, well, they didn't have phone books back then. <laughs> I know. It was a Sears catalog. I didn't get my new one yet. I got to order some underwear. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no. You know, I, I have to say that, um, you know, I, if I had to take a guess, I would probably say that the very first book that everyone probably owns is a Dr. Seuss book. Dr. Seuss. I love Dr. Seuss. I need an appointment with him. I need, a, I need him to tell me to tell me what, what's going on and, and, and why is it that children are so different these days? <laughs> well, I guess they're not, you know, they're not that different. They still run around and have fun, but they just have different types of toys. And I guess they do. Well, if you, you know, um, one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I like to actually, you know, I like to make books. <laughs> you make books? How on earth do you make a book? I mean, don't, don't the bookstores, I mean, there's Barnes and Noble, and, and there's, there's all these crazy places that got the borders, they used to have Pickwick, they used to have B. Dalton. What do you mean, you make books? The bookstores make the books, yeah? No, I mean, I actually learned how to make books a long time ago with one of my professors at school, and I fell in love with it, and I still make books to this day with all of my students. You make books. How long are, do you have a factory in here? Well, <laughs> if you call 250 students a factory, but oh, yes. That's, I, a, that's a sizable factory. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, pretty, it's really fun to make a book. Would you like to make a book? Would I like to make a book? Oy, oy, please, can I make a book? Well, okay. What kind of book would you make if you were going to make a book? What would you put in your book? Oh, I'm a good cook. Oh, and I have a recipe for kugel. Oh, you would love this kugel. I have so much that I could write down and put into a book. <laughs> That's a long book on kugel. <laughs> if I was going to make a book, I probably, because I like to do art, I'd probably make a sketchbook, an art book. An art book. I have heard that you, Ms. Rivka, are the most amazing artist I've ever heard about in my life. I want to see your work. So you know what? If you make a sketchbook, then you can share it and I can see it all. Well, I'm glad you think that way, Sophie. I wish the rest of the world would think that way. But, you know, it's a small community up here, so maybe that's why you've heard that. But, um... You know, there's other things you could do with books. You could make them into storybooks. I bet you have a lot of stories. I have stories. Some you want to hear and some you don't. <laughs> I bet you have lots of pictures. Oi, oi, the pictures, the pictures. Oh my gosh, I have all the photos from when my children were, were little and my grandchildren were little. And then, and then my, they all bring home art. They all bring home art from, art from their projects, and they all want, want me to put it on the refrigerator. And then, and then after a year, it's sitting there, and I'm tired of it, and I take it down. I don't know what to do. <gasps> I could put all the art from the refrigerator into a book that you helped me make. That is perfect. You could make a refrigerator art book honoring and celebrating the art of your grandchildren. I love it. Well, there's all sorts of things that we can do with books. So why don't we why don't we stop what, you know looking at this book and start making our own book? You mean we're gonna do it now? Why not? Why? Ah, ah, I love the idea. Can we please make a book? Oh, we can make a book, and we'll. Why don't we just? Uh, why don't I just take all this stuff away and we'll put up? Uh, How big will it be? Well, why don't we start out since this is your very first book? Instead of making a huge cocoa book for cooking. Why don't we make a teeny tiny book? A teeny tiny book? Yeah, like a little teeny tiny book. Can I write secrets in a teeny tiny book? You could, oh my gosh, you know what you could do besides secrets? Because they are teeny tiny. <laughs> Those secrets are teeny tiny. But you know how when you go to Chinese restaurants and you get, like, you break open the, the fortune and there's those little The fortune. little fortune cookies. I should save all my little fortunes and put them in this tiny book. I love it. Okay, well, let's make a tiny, t teeny tiny fortune, you know, Chinese fortune cookie book in honor of the, the Chinese who invented paper. How about that? I love it. Let's get to work. Okay, let's go. I took out some of my favorite books that I've made and some of my favorite books. So I was just going to show you this book I made for one of my friends, actually. Um, her name is Marlene and I made her a big huge book and I noticed that she's already starting to paint in her book. So, and this is an easy book to make. It's so, it's so beautiful. And then one year, the cool thing about books is the covers are so unique. This year we, we blew, we took ink and we blew on the book and then we 
painted inside of the ink and came up with really nice designs. And this one was a tall, thin book, and we drew in this book and did all sorts of things. And um, it was a nice shape. And this is one of my most favorite books, Harold, The Adventures of Harold and the Purple Crayon. I just love the fact that he takes a crayon and he just makes an adventure and he never has to leave his bedroom. And then this book, one of my friends bought me this book many years ago, and I really like it because this is a very unusual book. This is Making Faces, and I thought maybe, you know, I, I, I really like this book because you can, you can change the faces, you know, and do all sorts of things with them. So what I decided is I really like this book idea, so then I, I tried to make one myself, and so it's called Make, make a Friend. <laughs> I haven't finished it yet because it's still in the in the makings, but this one, you know, I could, made the book and then I cut it into three pieces and then I made, you know, and, and you can't see them, but this is a snowman. <laughs> but anyways, you can see that I started doing it, but I haven't finished. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to have a baby so that it'll inspire me. And this was a sketchbook I made with my students where I took a piece of uh, rubber and I carved it with my students and each person had different carving and then we made these beautiful paper designs and then we did our artwork inside of them. It's upside down. And so um, each each page is, you know, something that, oh, there's Ozzy Osbourne's son. Oh my gosh, this was a long time ago. Yes. And then, um, oh, oh my gosh, there's my friend Marlene, the girl that I made that book for. See how books are sort of memorial, me memories of things? Oh, this is a cool book. My friend Lee gave me this book, and it's a flip book. And it's Leonardo da Vinci's, um, you know, uh, little man, and he, he does, he kind of goes up and down, and he moves if you flip the books. So you can make flip books with your books. And then this book is my watercolor book that I sometimes bring places. What's this? Oh, Elmo. Elmo. Here's another book. See, books inside of books. But so, you know, you can make it out of watercolor paper, you can make it out of paper bags, whatever kind of materials you have, you can make it out of. And this book um, was an ABC book that I made one year, and I did all sorts of different things that had to do with different art supplies and different D is for dots and C is for collage. And, and, and uh, this was G is for gouache and H is for handmade paper, you know, and I just went on and on and on. So I made a book like that. And, and then these were, I just like the covers of these books. We actually took glue and we glued uh, on a piece of paper and then we took um, chalk and we chalked in the glue and then we sprayed it and they made these really beautiful kind of batiking looking designs for their front of their books. Isn't that cool? And then, you know, we just did our books. You know, with the, <laughs> I always put my name in the first page because I don't know I like to do that. And then. This book is the book that I just made for my school year. This is Ms. Rivka's new book for um, Yosemite High School students. And I, this is a big book, Sophie. <laughs> I mean, this is a huge signature. I think there's like nine signatures. What we're going to do is we're going to make a single signature book because this is your very first book. So we're going to only have one group of so you know folded and sewn pieces of paper, so that we'll have one book, one group of soul, sewn pieces of paper. And um, my friend came up and she went to this show, this art show, and this book was very expensive and has a very special uh, way of, you know, they take it apart here with this string. But this is called Ashes of in the Snow. Ashes of Snow. Is that what it's called? Ashes and Snow. And it's a beautiful it was a beautiful art exhibit, and then this book, which is looks like it's handmade, it must have been very, very expensive. Um, and it shows the different types of pictures of people working in an environment with animals. And these are all real pictures that were taken over many, many years of um, people having a relationship with animals. And it's just so, it's so beautiful. So, oh, look at this one. So anyways. Every book is special, and I want to show you how to make just the very smallest little book. And it's going to be a single signature book. So I'm going to get rid of all of these books so that we can get started. And, oops. All right, the first thing you need when you make books is the supplies. So we have all the supplies here, plus my glasses, because I'm going to need them. We have 
a, uh, a ruler and a cutting board or anything that you can cut on a piece of wood and a knife and a pair of scissors and some glue and some tacks and some tape and a rubber band and a needle and some thread and you need beautiful paper or whatever kind of paper you want to make for your cover. I chose this one because my friend's favorite color is purple and I'm going to make this one for her. You're going to need boards to make your cover and you're going to need a little thing in the middle to make a spine and then you're going to need your signature paper and then you're going to need a zhuker and a glue spreader and I know they look the same because they are the same but one is kept clean and one is used for glue and you're going to need a magazine and you don't need this <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm just using that to show you how to thread a needle and we're going to come up with a cover for our book but first we need to cut our signatures I mean sew our signatures before we cut them so what a signature is, is a group of pieces of paper that are all folded in half perfectly and when you fold your papers in half, you want to do them one at a time. Don't rush and do ten pieces of paper, you know, because then it doesn't fold nicely. And you want it to be perfect. You want it folded perfectly in half so that it's a beautiful book. Why should you work really hard and then have a, a book that doesn't have quality and integrity? So I'm going to make this book six pages long. But because this is on film and I want to make sure that you can really see it, I'm going to put, I already... I already did some and a half here. I'm going to put a piece of red paper on the outside of the signature, and we'll take this off later. But maybe we'll leave it on. I don't know. Yeah, let's leave it on. Okay, so I'm going to do it where, okay, we'll do the blue on the outside, and then we'll do the red on the inside so that you can see what's going on when I sew. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Depending on the size of your book, it could be any size you want. If you fold a piece of paper in half, that's how big your book is going to be. And when you open it up, then you'll have that half and this half. So depending on how big you want your actual final book is how long you make your paper. And your, your teachers will help you um, with that. They'll probably cut them for you. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your signature and you're going to tap it down. And then you're going to take your tacks, and you always want to use an odd number of tacks. Never even. Always odd. So I'm going to use, I think this is kind of small, and I would normally use three, but I'm going to use five just to show you, because sewing is very important. So the first tack, and usually you would take and put into a soft surface like this, eraser is nice and soft. And you'll take your tack, and you might want to scoot in so you can see, getting real close. And you're going to take your first tack, Make sure it's all you know tight and even, and you're going to stick it right through the center of your signatures, your folded sheets of paper. And I stuck it right through that um, eraser, so it's nice and soft. And I don't think I'm going to have enough room to do five, so I'm going to just do three. So I'm going to take the second tack, I'm going to put it next to it, about a half an inch. The bigger the book, the further apart, but you never want to go past, oops, you never want to go past uh, an inch apart. A half an inch is enough. So that's two, and it looks like we're going to only have room for one more tack. So this is going to be only <laughs> two stitches big. But that's okay, because this is going to be a book to, for small little secrets. So we don't need these tacks. I'm going to put them over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to thread your needle. And um, I had my students make, so I could show my students how to do this. I because they sit far away and they can't see this teeny little needle here. I had my student actually carve this needle and then, um, and then make this long thread and I actually do a whole big book, but we're going to just do a little one. But I want you to make sure that when you thread the needle, that you thread it and you don't go all the way down. You only want to take your thread and to about here because this is, this is about as much thread as you're going to need and you're not going to tie a knot at the end of the string. It's not necessary and it makes things difficult. So you're going to only take and put your thread through like this and then you have the rest of the thread. And um, to make, decide how long you want your thread, I've already kind of cut a piece of thread here. Um, I like to be prepared. And what I do is I like to take thread and I make it, I put the thread down and then I just kind of go one, two, and then I, and then I sort of double it so that's like that, and then I do it one more time just to give a little extra 
um, amount of string so I can tie it off in the end. So we've got this piece of string and I always have to wear my glasses when I thread it and you want to thread oh my gosh it went right through right through and what you're going to do is you're going to like just leave this the thread just like about like that and then you're going to start to sew and I always like to have something here to stick my my needles in and what we'll do is should we Sophie should we do a a, a book that is um a, a Japanese style book or do you want to do a European style book? Oh, European. That's where I came from originally when I was a very little girl. I came from Europe. Don't ask what country. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, we'll make a European book. And the difference between European and Japanese is the Japanese, when they sew their book, they sew it from the inside so that when they tie off their string, the string actually hangs out and it's considered good luck. But the Europeans, they start from the back side and the reason they start from the back side is they don't like strings hanging out. They like well, it I don't like strings hanging out. <laughs> they that like looks funny. Yeah, so they want, it, they want to tuck it away and glue it behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you actually how to sew this signature together. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually sew our signatures together. And your signature won't have these color sheets unless you want to. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do, but um, I wanted to do the color because this thread is white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a, a sewing for a, a European sewing, so that the, the knot is going to be hidden in the, hidden in the back. But first, the first thing you need to do is get a piece of tape, and I'm going to use just regular old masking tape. It's not like something special. You can use any kind of tape you want. I'm just going to prepare that, and then what I'm going to do, and my students invented this, because you know I was holding it, and I just, you know, they said, Ms. Ripker, why don't you put some tape on it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the very first pin out, which is the middle pin. And so if you have nine pins, you'll still take the middle pin out. If you have seven pins, which is normally what I use seven, you'll still take the middle one out. If you have five, you'll still take the middle. If you have three, you'll still take the middle. The smallest amount of stitches you can do is three because after that there's only one and you can't stitch in one hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and be very careful because these are very sharp. I'm going to take this first center um, tack out and I'm going to go into the back side. And so I made the blue paper the back side so you can see it. And I'm going to go right through that hole. Now if you try to make this stitch go through without making holes, you're your, um, your needle would break. And now I'm going to just take a little extra string here, and since this is such a small book, it's going to go over, but I would say give yourself about three inches, you know, for to tie off. And I'm just going to tape it here so it doesn't move. And it's really helpful because then you can use both hands instead of trying to hold the string. Now you're going to find that your, your, um, oops, your thread is on the, coming out the yeah, inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a tap. And I'm only going to have to take out one tack here at a time. And, oops. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to take the needle. And I'm going to go right through that hole. Okay. And I'm going to pull it through. And if I had more uh, threads, I would keep going up and down and up and down all the way to the bottom. And then I turn around. But since I only have one, because this is such a small book, it comes out on the back, and once you get to the top, wherever the top is, if you go in and out, in and out, whatever the top is, when you get to the final top, you're going to go back down. And so I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go through the center hole, because that's the hole that's next. And, okay, come on. Oops, let me just try it here. <laughs> okay, there it goes. And just pull it through. And now you have one full stitch. And now it's going to be coming out the center on this particular one, but if you had more stitches, of course you'd be going all the way down to the center. Once you get to this, you know, the center, you're going to, you know, turn the book the other way and you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to take out this pin, whatever pin's next, and if there's more pins down here, you'll be taking them out one at a time. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to sew the next stitch. Okay, so now we have two full stitches here. One, two. And I'm going to turn it around and 
it's coming out the back, and if I had to go down, up, down, up, and then back through, when I get to the top, I'm going to go back down. And I, since I only have one stitch, because this is such a tiny little book, I'm going to put it right through the center. Now, if there was, like, many stitches, let me get a book to show you. I'll be right back. Let me get my... Uh, I wonder if this... I think this one shows it. Okay. This is a single signature book. One single sheet. sheet. All the sheets are all pulled together and sewed together. And this one has one, two, three, four, five stitches. And so what I do is uh, the last two stitches in the middle, after I've gone up and down, I want to double up these stitches right here. Because these stitches, these two center stitches, need to have a little fortification. So since we only have three stitches, we only, <laughs> we're just going to have to go and do the same exact thing again. So we're going to take and go down. You know, from the center, we're going to go down to the next hole. We're going to pull it through. And then we'll be on the back side. And then we're going to go back through the center. And come out the front. And now we're going to double up. So there's double thread right here. Now we're going to double this thread. And we're going to go through. And then you're ready to tie it off. And what you'll see is you'll see the center string is held by the piece of tape. And I'm going to take the tape off now. Be very careful. And now you have this string coming out of the center here. And you have this needle here. And what you're going to do is, there's a certain way of tying this off that my students and I have figured out works the best. And what it is, is you take and you go on this side of the center hole. And then what happens is there's something for that knot to hold on to. So you go through and see how now it's nice and tight. I haven't even tied a knot, but it's already nice and tight to tie a knot off. But before I tie the knot off, I'm going to go through the top part of the stitch. See this part right here? I'm going to pull it through. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to tie a knot. Like, you know, you tie your shoes. So there's one. And I think, you know, they always say that it's better to do two of everything because it's stronger. So I'm going to make another knot just like I was making a knot in my shoe to make a bow. There's the second knot. And because this is such a small book, you know, you don't really need to do too much to it. But if this was a real big book, like you're making a bigger book, you'd want to do the same exact step again. So you'd be coming through one of the stitches, coming all the way through, and then coming back through the other stitch on the top so that you have something to tie it to. And then go ahead and tie it in a knot, like you would tie your shoe. There's one, and there's two. And I always recommend doing it twice because that makes sure that it's not going to fall apart. Because once it gets loose, there's nothing you can do. Now, all you need to do is cut it. Now, you don't want to cut your strings really close because then the knot might come out. So you want to leave yourself about an inch, like that. Okay, so that's how you sew it together. Sophie, did you see that fairly well? I saw it so clearly, I can see it in my dreams. <laughs> well, it was beautiful the way you showed us how to do this. Oh my goodness. Oh good. I couldn't ask for a better explanation. Well, what I'm going to do now is I want to go to the next step um, and make the cover. But before I make the cover, I need to cut. Do you see how, do you see how this is all uneven right here? It's not all the pages are all uneven. That's because when you fold paper together, the thickness causes it to create like a, a sharp angle right there. And you know, this is kind of ugly. So what I recommend, and I'm going to stand up to do this, is to cut that edge off. And that edge is called the fore edge. And I'm going to get out my cutting board. Now you're, you can use anything. I wouldn't use right on the table because then, you know, your mom would get mad. Um, I would use a piece of wood, or this is a very nice thing, it's a cutting board I happen to have. But it doesn't, you don't have to use anything special, you can actually use a magazine, just as long as the knife, by the way, if you're a little kid, and like if you're really old, like Sophie, you might want to have somebody help you because this is very sharp. But you can take any sort of little pen knife, and you put your signature down, and squeeze it really tight, and what you're going to do, 
and I'm going to put this up like this so you can see it. So you're going to put your ruler like right at the edge of the first page. And then you're just going to hold it really tight. And you'll take your um, knife. This is called an exacto blade, an exacto knife. And they cost like a dollar fifty at a store. And make sure that your fingers are not in the way. Oh my goodness, that would be the end of kugel making. So what we're going to do is we're going to just cut it one sheet at a time. There's no, there's, you do not have to rush through this um, step. Just cut it one sheet at a time right up against that ruler. And it's best to use a metal ruler. Do not use a plastic ruler because the, the metal um, is stronger and the plastic you might, um, it might cut through the plastic and then get your finger. And, um, and I, this is very thick paper. I use very thick paper. If it was thinner, I could cut it a lot faster. But I'm just going to take my time. There's no rush. And I'm going to cut them one at a time so that it's nice and straight. And you want to use a nice, sharp blade. And I always make sure I put my blade between, every time I use it, I always put the cover back because you don't want somebody to um, cut themselves or poke themselves. Okay, so I'm going to put that away because we don't need that anymore. And these are all little scraps of trash that later on, maybe one day I'll show you. Sophie, would you like to learn how to make handmade paper? I would love to make handmade paper. Well, I can't you, even imagine how to do such a thing. <laughs> all you need to do is save all of your little scraps of paper and the envelopes that you get junk mail and especially dryer lint. You need dryer lint. And one day I'll show you Dryer how. lint? Yes. Dryer lint? What on earth do you do with dryer lint? I that, have tons. That of holds this. the fiber of the paper together. So what you're seeing is the perfect straight forage. This is called the forage of the book, like the forehead. So now we've got the forage of your signatures nice and straight. And we're just going to put this aside. And I'm going to take and we don't need this stuff anymore, so I'm going to put it aside. Now, what you're going to do is when you make your book, you have to decide how big you want your cover. And the, what I do is I measure it. And, you know, your friend or your teacher, whoever you're going to do this with, what they'll do is that I, um, they, they'll help you if you need to, if you're a little kid. But you want to leave about a quarter of an inch on the top and a quarter of an inch on the bottom. And then you want to make the cover exactly the same size as when you fold the sheets in half. And my, when I folded these sheets in half, it was three inches. It was six inches, and when I folded the six-inch paper in half, it became three inches. So that's how big you make this. And however long you need this, just make sure to give it a quarter of an inch on each side, which means a half an inch bigger than the actual sheet of paper. And you're going to need two of those for the front cover and the back cover. And depending on how many signatures, this is only one signature, but like the Herald's, the, Her the Adventures of Harold the Purple Crayon, there's many signatures. And that's a very thick book, so the spine here needs to be bigger. But each book is going to be different. And what, how I measure it is I take the pieces of board and I kind of squish the signature like that. And I don't squish it really tight, but I just hold it. And then I'll take my ruler and I'll measure how much space is there. And that's a half an inch, believe it or not. This tiny little book has a half an inch right there. So what I did is I cut a piece of board a half an inch by the same length as the actual cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to glue this together. Sophie, can you see this? I'm, I'm watching very carefully. Okay. What I'm going to do is I don't want to get glue on my desk, and I'm sure if you did this at home or, you know, at you know, somebody's school or something like that, you wouldn't want to get any glue on anything, so you're going to try to be as neat as you can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up. I took a piece of beautiful paper and I gave it an inch around. I measured this already. <coughs> Excuse me. I measured it already, and what I did is I um, gave it an inch all the way around if you put it all together. Now you have to make sure that you don't have it where it's too tall here. See, this is, I made this a little bit bigger because of the way the shape of the, the signature is. So don't make, make sure that it's even all the way across. And so that's, you know what I might do? Just to make it so that you can visually see it. I'm going to say, I'm going to make a little line that goes like this so that I know that that goes up and down. Sometimes it helps. Because if I went like this, now you'd say something's wrong. If you want to have it up and down. 
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to move, I'm going to, well, hi, how are you, Mr. Gonzalez? <laughs> we're, we're filming, that's okay, you can come in. We're in our class, my classroom, and I'm teaching how to make books. And we'll, it'll only take us about 15 more minutes, and then we'll have our book done. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Should we erase that? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take your glue, and I, this is PVA, you can get it at NASCO, and I'm going to glue right on this paper. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to squish out the glue just a little bit, and I'm going to take a glue spreader, I call these glue spreaders, and I'm going to spread it. I'm going to, and there's going to be a bunch of glue all over this because I put too much out. But that's okay. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to glue it all the way like that and spread it. And did you notice that I put my glue spreader on a piece of a magazine? And now I'm going to take and I'm going to put that down right where, you know, when, when I lined it up, I'm going to give it an inch around. I'm going to just lay it down backwards. And what I want to do is I'm going to just take my finger and get rid of the excess glue because I kind of made it kind of a mess. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to take another sheet of paper Magazines are great because you can read them and then you can use them for art. So it's recycling. And I'm going to take, after I put it down as straight as I can, I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to take my zucker, which is like a glue spreader, it's just a piece of board, and I'm going to go like this so it's nice and flush on the paper. And I'm going to turn it around and see there's glue all this paper on this paper, so you want to make sure that you always have glue, paper underneath so you don't get glue on anything. Now the next step is very, very special. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on the spine and then I'm going to place it right next to the cover and then I'm going to immediately lift up the cover and when I lift it up there's going to be a perfect space in between there so that you can actually open and close your book. If you don't do that, then it'll be like right up against it and you won't be able to open up your book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just glue it right on, oops, gosh, there's so much glue coming out of here. It's very wet glue. And then I'm going to spread, 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 so that there's glue on the whole thing. And I'm going to get rid of the excess glue before I even put it down. Okay. So I've got glue on the whole section, the whole area. And I'm going to put it down right now, right flush right up against the cover. I'm going to immediately move it. Just go move. And when it moves, it opens up the space. And now I'm going to take another piece of paper. Turn it upside down and juke it. Now this is a word I made up. No, I didn't even make it up. No, I did. <laughs> I made it up because it sounds like juke, 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 juke. And my students actually think it's a real word. Ms. Rivka, can I get a juker? I'm like, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> you really think that's a real word. Okay. Now, the next one that we put down is going to be all right, this one. And this cover, I'm going to put some glue on it, and then I'm going to juke it. And you notice that I'm doing it all on the cover sheet, I'm not putting it somewhere else, because I don't really care if there's glue on the cover sheet, because we're going to glue the whole thing anyway, eventually. Okay, I'm going to put, I put glue on the entire cover sheet, the cover, I'm going to put it down, right flush up against that spine, and now I'm going to lift it immediately. And then as soon as I lift it, it leaves a perfect line in between there. Do you see that? Okay, now I'm going to take a fresh piece of paper and I'm going to turn it upside down and juke it just so it's nice and flat and flush. Okay, now you have something like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually do something called math. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're going to do math. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to take it and you're going to rip it in half. And then you're going to take it and rip it in half again. So you'll have four sheets. And what you're going to do with those four sheets is this. It's going to be a surprise. And what I think I'm going to do, since I maybe cut this a little too long, I'm going to actually cut it with a scissors. It's always good to have scissors right here so that it's a little bit more even. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the corners and you're going to do it right where the, the corner has to touch the piece of um, cardboard. 
and um, it has to touch right up against it flush, and you're going to do it at a 45 degree angle. And what a 45 degree angle is, is that this line should e be the same as this line. And this line should be the same as this line. So this is not a 45 degree angle. And when you glue it down, they should look like this. And so what I'm going to do is with these four little sheets of paper, I'm going to first I'm going to kind of just get the, the 45 degree angles in there. The better the angle, the nicer it's going to look in the end. And you're going to pick your fingernail and go in between the paper and the board. Make sure that there's, you know, it's all nice and ready to do, to glue. And then you're going to open it up. And then you're going to take one of your pieces of square paper, or your, one of your four sheets, and put a little glue, and then spread, spread, spread. So the whole triangle, the whole triangle gets glue on it, and then you're going to put it down. And it's going to already have like a natural fold in it because you prepared it. And now I'm going to get rid of this piece of paper because I don't want it. It's dirty. You always want to have fresh paper. I'm going to put another free, fresh piece of paper under the next triangle, put some glue, take my glue spreader. The glue spreader is great because when you, um, when you use a glue spreader, it makes it nice and thin and um, even, the glue, instead of big and globby. And your fingers don't get so dirty. I'm going to get rid of that piece of square paper. I'm going to take a new sheet of um, one of those sheets. Take and put glue in the corner. Spread, spread, spread. Get rid of this sheet of paper. Put my corner down. Squeeze it. Get all the extra glue that kind of came out. I kind of put too much on. And then the last corner. See how fast this goes, Sophie? This is so quick, I can make one every day. Yes, you can. In 30 days, you could have a whole collection of uh, cookbooks. <laughs> you can make them for your friends. I could have a recipe in each book. Yeah. <gasps> Mini recipes. That would be cute. Okay. Now you're to this point where there's the, the piece of paper has four corners. Now the next part's really obvious. If you don't know, if you can't figure it out, I'm going to show you. What you're going to do is you're going to just pretend like you know, like you did with the corners, and get it kind of already bent and make sure it's right up against the boards. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take some fresh paper and I'm going to rip it longwise so that I have long paper so I don't get glue on the desk. And I'm going to open it up, put glue on the whole thing, not just in the middle, you want it on the corners too, and you're going to glue the whole thing like this. And then we've got glue on it. I'm going to get rid of this paper over here, and I'm going to just glue it down. Now this glue is PVA. It's polyvinyl acid, acid uh, vinyl, polyvinyl adhesive. It's made specially for bookbinding, but it's very popular. At arts, art, uh, any teacher can buy it. It's not like you have to go to Germany, but I buy mine from Germany because that's where the original glue was made. But you can buy it here in the United States. They actually bring it in from Germany through a United States company so that you can have this glue dry very, very flat. It's much better than white glue. It's a little more expensive, but it's totally worth it. I'm going to take another sheet of paper and I'm going to rip it in half this way this time. And I'm going to glue these sides. Now, am I doing this too fast, Sophie? No, I'm following this. You know what you were talking about, Germany, and you know we were talking before, and you were telling me all about something, that, a book from Germany. What was that all about? Oh yeah, the very, very first book that ever made. We we, we both decided. Well, you thought maybe the first book was um, a phone book, but you know there was no phones invented back a thousand years ago. And I thought, you know, maybe it might have been a Dr. Seuss book because that's my favorite book. But do you know the very first book that was ever made? Would you please remind me? Because I know I know it, but I have forgotten. The Bible. The Bible! <laughs> That's why the book was invented in the first place, because they were... Who oh, knew I was so silly and forgetting such the, a wonderful, good book as the Bible? Oy. Well, the Bible was the reason why they had to invent books, because they needed to take all those stories about Jesus and put them in one nice, concise thing that's not going to get lost, and it was chapters. And um, they were able to put together the Bible, and to this day, that's why, you know, by, if it wasn't for the Bible, the book probably wouldn't have been invented for a long time. Oh, it was God built, for the Bible. The book was made out of necessity. 
Okay. Necessity is the mother of invention. There you go. Always remember that. <laughs> okay, now you're actually ready. Here's your cover. And you could put another, you can decorate this cover any way you want. Do all your decorations and folding before you do the final putting of the signature. And this is the last basic step. You know, you can, you can see how it's going to look. See how it's going to look? It's beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to actually use this blue sheet of paper because I think it's kind of pretty. And I'm just going to keep it on there. But you could just use the white sheet. It doesn't really matter. And I, I think I should just leave the red sheet in there. But you know, if I, I was going to rip it out. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it in because it's kind of pretty. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to take, because this is so small, I'm going to take two sheets and two more sheets. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to rip it in half so I have two sheets and two sheets. And I'm going to take, I'm going to put a sheet of paper in between the very first piece of paper and the last piece of paper, which is right there. And that is called your end sheet. It's the end sheet. And you're going to put glue, 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 and then spread, 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 just like we did with the cover. And we're going to spread it. And then we'll take this piece of paper out and you're going to take your whole signature and you're going to lift it up and you're going to put it right smack in the middle here. Not too high, not too low, not on one side, not on the other. You want to put it right in the middle and look on both sides and make sure that's exactly where you want it because once you lay that end sheet down, it's, that's where it goes. And we're going to lay it down just like this. And then we're going to take the zhuker and zhuk it. Zook is very important. <laughs> okay, now, this is still a little wet, so, oh, I already got my fingerprint on this. Can you believe it? Ugh. Well, you know, I'll, I'll always remember you made it. <laughs> and now I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to put it there so that the glue doesn't, no, I've already got glue on it, but the, so the rest of the thing doesn't get glue on it. I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm, I'm going to glue this side. And what I'm going to do is take another sheet of paper and stick it right at the end in between the end and the other piece of paper in the signature, I'm going to glue. And I'm going to take my glue spreader and I'm going to spread, spread, spread. I'm going to try to get all the glue on the whole thing. You don't want to have any areas unglued. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece of paper away because it's dirty. And you're not going to put it down like this. You're going to lift up the entire signature or else the book won't close correctly and then put it down and it'll naturally go in the right position because the other one's already glued down. And you're gonna zook it, zook, 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 zook. Okay. And then I'm gonna take a sheet of paper here and I'm going to um, you know just kind of press it down. And now there's something um, if you make a bigger book or you have more signatures, um, you have there's it's a little bit more complicated, but I would recommend Getting tape, you know, if this is your first book, getting tape, but I use other things. I use duct tape, but t this is a small book, so we can use clear tape or whatever color, color tape, whatever you want. And open up your signature, and you might need a friend to do this, and you would preferably like this to be done dry, but, you know, it's, we are kind of like in a hurry to make our book, so. And you're going to take a piece of tape, and you'll tape right on the signature, on that, the white paper, whatever color paper you decide, right on, the tape, right on the signature, and then take your finger and crease it and put a piece of tape right onto the end sheet. And this will help your book stay together longer. And I, I always kind of clip it to make it nice and neat because I think it would look better that way. Okay. And normally I would do this with other things, but tape is good because everybody seems to have tape around in their house. Any kind of tape will work. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a fresh sheet of paper. But this time I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, I'm gonna put it there. Because it's still wet. I would wait seriously for this to dry before I would let my students move along. They'd have to wait until this totally dry. But their books are very big. And I'm gonna take another piece of tape. And I'm gonna put it on this white part of the signature and then put it down onto the colored paper because that's what I have there, the blue. I'm going to, I'm using my fingernail and this is going to be the last step. And if, um, now you have a book.
Isn't that cool? And you can start your book. Ms. Off. Rivka, I am so impressed I am speechless. <laughs> Anyway, so this is what I would recommend. Once I got the book together like this, I always take a rubber band and I push, I take my signature and I push really hard to make sure it's right in there, really tight. And then I close the book and then I just take a rubber band and I go back and forth like this. And then what I do is I don't want any twists in the rubber band because it's, um, it'll cause the cover to have a little crease in it. So I try to make the rubber band untwisted and I'm trying and I make like a big cross with a center section depending sometimes if it's a bigger book I'll use two rubber bands like this. But what it is do, what it'll do is it'll hold the book nice and tight while it's drying. Okay, that's as good as I can do it because there's always going to be a twist <laughs> because it's if I doubled it up so now you just let it sit and then tomorrow you open it up and you open it up and what you'll do is you'll take it to the center area where you sewed and you'll crack the binding. Have you ever heard of that? Crack the binding? That's my favorite part of a new book. <laughs> is to is crack, to the, crack binding. the binding. And then what you can do is you can keep opening it and crack it and crack it. And once it's cracked, then it'll be easy to manipulate, and then you can start filling up your book. I love it. So um, that's all I have to tell you about book binding, because after that, it's all up to you. If you want to put shiny paper on this, if you want to put whatever you want to do. After this, once you learn the, the beginning of making the book, then the cover is just more and more exciting, because you can always change and make new covers. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs>